the morning of June 10th at 1.30 in the morning, I got a call from the Alaska State Troopers saying that there's been a bear attack and a person needs immediate medical attention. Um, so I got some more information from the troopers. It was 650 miles northwest of Anchorage. Immediately I knew I would be contacting the 176 wing, the rescue trio, the 210th, 211th, and 212th. Well, it was 2 a.m. when I got the phone call and I jumped out of bed because I knew that if, with only two hours left on our alert cycle, if they were calling us, it had to have been emergent, that they couldn't wait two hours for the next fresh crew to come on. So jumped out, got coffee, got out of the house as fast as possible. The injuries reported to me was a broken arm, lacerations, and bleeding a lot with bear bites all over his body. The time I got the phone call, it was expected that this is most likely gonna be a, a jump operation, and so we prepared accordingly. Once the air crew got airborne, Every second counted in that moment. And uh, both Cody and Jeremy are really good PJs and good medically. So they were able to make that determination, pass the recommendation on to the aircraft commander, who in turn with approval from the ops group commander went ahead and went for the jump. See, we jumped off the ramp 3000 feet. We immediately started uh, trying to orient ourselves to the survivor. We saw something moving in the alders under canopy. Jeremy initially thought it might've been the survivor and his party moving, but it turns out it was not. Uh, whether it was the bear or not, I'm not gonna speculate, but it definitely started steering us towards an offset drop zone. And uh, we landed uh, about 800 meters from the survivor. Everything went beautifully. It's, they're very experienced guys, so. We called the C-130 and have them, had them do a, uh, a show of force, which is something usually fighter jets do overseas to, to show that they've got teeth and they can drop bombs. We, we had the C-130 flying low and loud over our position, hopefully, you know, possibly scaring that animal off if he was still out there because we were unarmed. And then once we got to that big group, his hunting guide had, had some weapons, so we felt a lot better. I felt like I could go heads down and start stopping his, uh, stopping the bleeding, starting the breathing, breathing, make sure he's doing, he's doing good. And everything was just coordinated perfectly between the RCC you know, the handover of care. Once we had him in the C-130, we then landed back in Anchorage and we loaded him on a second helicopter, the Army helicopter that, uh, that Katie mentioned. And that was about a 15 minute flight to Providence Medical Center where we land on the helipad on the roof. This group is so trained and knows exactly what to do that it, it's kind of, uh, I wouldn't say anticlimactic, but when everybody knows their job and their place, there's. There's nothing but calm, slow, cool, collected actions. I knew that when I got him to the, the trauma team at Providence Medical Center, uh, that he was going to be in good hands. And uh, that was a sense of relief and uh, a sense of job satisfaction that I don't think I'm ever going to get again. It was one of the highlights of my career. Um, and I was just very grateful to, to have been a part of it and played a small piece in it.